Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to chip OBD1 ECU. What I have here is my spare P28 manual ECU. These are one of the more common ECUs that people like to chip. The reason being it's already VTEC converted and it's used to be very easy to find at the junkyards. Um, they're not that, that's not the case anymore. These are actually quite rare now as well, but we're gonna chip this today. If you have a um, non-VTEC ECU, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to get additional VTEC conversion kit and convert it to a VTEC ECU. This is already VTEC converted from the factory, which is why people tend to use this ECU. Uh, so all we're gonna have to do is install a chipping kit, which you can easily get on eBay or any of those other uh, popular sites. Um, I purchased this right here, which is the chipping kit. It came with um, an SST chip, um, the socket as well as another chip in there. Uh, this baggie came with resistors, capacitors, um, and a data logging uh, port as well, which we're going to be all fully installing today. I went a step further and I also purchased a ZIF socket. These are great because you could basically put your chip in there and then lock it in. And then when you want to take your chip off, you unlock it and then you pull your chip out. This reduces the damage on your chip. Um, if you're going to be pulling it out and inserting it quite often. So let's just get to work and open up the CCU. and clean looking inside essentially where the chipping kit goes is going to be around here this area here um, like as you can see this is where the socket will go etc it is very tight in here which is why a zip socket works perfectly um, all these little pieces in here are already labeled so we already know exactly where each piece goes so we'll go over the steps of how to do that we're gonna also move, remove the back side of the cover. So we're gonna do that real quick as well. There you go. That's open as well. So some people like to go another step further and they pull the whole ECU out of here. I don't know if we need to essentially. Uh, I think most of the stuff is already there. Uh, we could do it without having to do any of that, but we do have to desolder a whole bunch of stuff. So we're going to work on this area first, start off, and then we're going to work our way and finish it all off with all the other things. Um, this is already labeled, so we're just going to have to look and locate every single piece. All right, what you see here, we're going to go from this side to this side. Um, we have the SST chip. This is what you're going to burn a ROM onto. Um, this is a, another chip. I don't know what it really does, but it is necessary for chipping your ECU. Here is the socket for the SST that goes in there. However, I did purchase this, which is a zip socket. It has the lever that allows us to put the socket in and then lock it in place. Here is a replacement capacitor that's for the ECU that's really commonly blown. I don't think we have to like replace ours because uh, it's, it still looks like in good condition. Here's the data logging port. Uh, here's the R54 resistor. Here's the J1 uh, jumper resistor and C51 and C52 capacitors uh, or microcapacitors. So the, this basically is the chipping kit here that you're going to need to install into your ECU. All right, so we're gonna start off with this area first. We're gonna start off with the resistors. Um, so the J1 resistor is this one right here and R54 is right here. So we're gonna desolder these two points with some desoldering wick. And then we're going to um, put in the resistors. So the, the resistors are not polarity sensitive, so you could go any way you want. So all you have to do is just slip it in and solder it in place. 
So with it flipped around, it would be these four on this side right here. So these four right here. So those holes right here have been cleared out. It took a lot of work. Um, didn't really work for desoldering. This wick kind of sucks. Anyways. So we'll start off by putting J1, which is this one here. Go on the top. Alright, so now you can see that these are all in now, uh, resistors and capacitors. I seem to have lost the footage of me installing the microcapacitors, but the microcapacitors go in these two areas here, C51 and C52. These do go on the board in a specific direction. The microcapacitors will have one side that has writing on it. For C52, the writing will face downwards. And for C51, the writing will face towards the left, where the harness is. Now it's time for this chip here. There's a little like curve on the end here um, that faces towards the harness side. So if your harness is over here, this has to face there like this. So you can see there's a curve on that board too. So this is the way that it's supposed to go. So I'm going to desolder those joints and put this chip in. As well, we could start desoldering the ZIF socket uh, or the socket hole, which goes right here. Um, essentially, the handle here faces this curve here. So we're gonna desolder both of those and also install these. Alright, so it looks like this chip here gets in the way of um, just the ZIF socket. So I'm going to put it onto the regular socket and then solder it on. Should give enough room just like that. As you can see, it clears that chip right here. So I guess that's probably how we're supposed to do it. That way, I guess I can pull out the ZIF socket whenever I, when I want to. Alright, now it's time to solder that in. All right, so the last thing to do is to install the data lag logger port right here. Um, it goes to CN2. So from here where it says CN2, it is the four prongs or the four spots um, from the left to the right. So if the harness is on this side, it is one, two, three, four. So that's where you're supposed to um, put this. So I'm gonna desolder that and then I'm gonna install this. All right, the whole board is now completely chipped. 
everything is good. Uh, so now with all the uh, solder joints here, we get some uh, isopropyl alcohol and we're going to get a toothbrush and we're going to scrub all this down. Uh, and as you can see, there's this shiny coating on here. This is a conformal coating. So what we're going to have to do is reapply another conformal coating on here. What the conformal coating does is it actually protects the circuit board from getting, um, you know, moisture and water and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is scrub this down first. Then we're going to apply a new conformal coating over those spots. There you go, a conformal coating has been applied to the areas that have been burned off. Uh, I'm just using a conformal coating pen. Obviously it's not going to look as nice as like the whole rest of the board. I'm not going to go ahead and color it. This stuff is actually quite expensive. Um, most of it has the conformal coating on it. It's a little bit faded because uh, probably from the rubbing alcohol or the isopropyl alcohol. But for the most part, I'm just going to for, wait for this to dry. Then I'm going to flip it over and then I'm going to conformal coat some of the other side. Alright. So now that that's all installed, like if once we get the uh, base map burned onto here, all you have to do is just drop it into this slot here. Clip her in. And you can run it. Basically that's it. And then when you want to remove the chip, yeah, unlock it and take the chip out. Easy peasy. All right, so the ECU is all done now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna burn a base map, a P28 base map, so the stock D16Z6 map onto the SST chip, and then we're gonna test out this um, ECU to make sure everything works. So I'm just gonna burn something and then we're gonna put it in and we'll test it out. All right guys, so I plugged in the uh, chipped ECU. As you can see, here's the chip that I've burned. Uh, I put a stock P28 ROM on here because we know the P28 ROM does run the car. So um, yeah, let's fire it up. All right, there you go. Car runs, no engine check light. Everything is working fine on the P28 ROM. Uh, this is just the stock P28 ROM on here. Um, we will tune it later. But as you can see, it's still running very, very lean at idle. So we definitely got to adjust that up because it should be about 14.7 stoic, or however you pronounce that, stoic. Um, but I'm going to need a wideband gauge just to tune. This is just, you know, for reference, just to see what, where I'm at. But as you can see, even at idle, at such high idle, it's it's uh, really low on the air fuel ratio, so we definitely need to tune this a little bit. Um, as well as I'm gonna probably have to adjust the timing on this thing as well, put it back to 12 degrees. But there you go, everything is running fine. All right guys, so that's basically it for this video. That's how you would chip a P28 ECU or any OB1 ECU for that. Um, I hope this helps you guys out. And if you haven't already, please comment, like, and subscribe, and share my videos. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.